Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe been through it's not that different from what I've been through I think I'm really starting to like you what if I actually start to fall for I think that we need a little change of pace I know behind haunted house not too far from here hello I'm Sophia Jessica and welcome to the fan carpet hey Robert how are you, how doing? Are you? yeah good. I'm good thanks how are you uh yeah doing great good where are, you, where are you based? London, UK. Cool. Nice. How about yourself? Uh, we're both in LA. Yeah. Oh, all right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Hey, Boo Boo. How you doing? How are you? How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good. Just uh, enjoying the morning. Cool. Been yeah. looking up. Uh, I've been looking at medieval art. Like, there's this one art piece called master of 1333 nice. i don't know i don't know how to pronounce it in french but it's like my my or the 1333 i don't know but yeah. um, it's medieval art so interesting and like the uh also like the medieval um what are those called uh, the, the books the uh manuscripts medieval manuscripts like the art that describes what's happening or like they're they're so deep into like using animals to you know depict a feeling or like and it's just so weird honestly it's just really weird <laughs> it's the weirdest like and i'm just kind of into it right now so it's just like that up. <laughs> sounds That's cool it. though yeah go down a rabbit hole with that um, I used to I used to be big into mythology, um, not so much now because my uh, my uh, interest diverged. But I was into mythology when I was young, when I was younger, like all Greek mythology, um, like mm. Norse mythology, um, Egyptian mythology, all of it. Ah, oh, the Egyptians, that was crazy too. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, fantastic film. Um, so if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you guys to get into the industry? Oh, the beginning, beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me personally, I, uh, my dad is an actor and a stunt coordinator. So I grew up on set, going to sets with him just for fun, because I really liked it. Like I'd always ask him, can I skip school? Can I go to set? And he would say yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I would literally, I grew up like sleeping, you know, with the stunt team, like on the stunt pads, like, okay, booby, you got to go to sleep now. Okay, go to sleep with a jacket. Okay, sleep, you know, on set all night. Um, and uh, so that was how I grew up. Um, I think to like real, when I was, uh, when I was 15 years old, I, I had, you know, being, Growing up in that lifestyle, I definitely like did things here and there. I was influenced by my older sister who's doing stunts for my dad, it inspired me to do it. But then I think by the time I was 15, I, I honestly I saw Heath Ledger's performance in the joke as the Joker. And I just thought that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And uh, that's what I wanted to do. Cool. Uh, what, um, was the stunts stunts background what inspired you to get into martial arts? Yeah, it was it was my parents. Uh, I think my father too. It just he had done martial arts, and um, I started training when I was three years old, wow. and uh, I competed all over. And my 
my two sisters at the time, my youngest sister hadn't been born, but we all competed. And uh, yeah, I still train. I just got my black belt a few years ago. And um, yeah, I, I love it. Awesome. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I haven't been back for a, for a long while, but I, I um, I'm disciplined in Shotokan karate. Oh, amazing. Uh, but I haven't done it for a, quite a while. <laughs> Uh, mm. But I still remember everything. My timing might be a bit off, though. Uh, what about you, Robert? Uh, for me, when basically in elementary school, we used to go on like camping trips or I'd be hanging out with my cousins and I would just kind of make up on the spot uh, uh, ghost stories. And, <laughs> um, I, like, I ended up getting in like some trouble for it because like my cousin... <laughs> My cousins like couldn't sleep and were like having nightmares and my uncle would yell at me. Um, we had this one, like he was like the biggest like friend of ours and he would, he would in the cabin like we were at, he would like put a pillow over his head and so he couldn't hear my voice and would just like hum to himself. <laughs> and so after like a couple of these, one friend was like, you know, that'd make an interesting movie. I was like, hmm. I haven't thought about that. Well, let's give this a try. This is like, this is like third grade. <laughs> and so, yeah, I like grabbed my like parents, like, you know, a little handy cam and then, uh, and then made, just kind of kept making film after film after film. Right, cool. Um, so Robert, what was it about those, those who walk away that compelled you to bring it to the, bring the story to the screen? Yeah, I mean, it really kind of started, you know, with this core idea of let's do a one-shot horror film. Uh, and then also, you know, let's explore this, this um, kind of relationship uh, gone wrong, you know, kind of that, that looks for salvation in trauma and then ultimately it erupts. And, um, and so, yeah, you know, it was, it was, you know, partly my own experience, partly kind of seeing, you know, just things that were going on in the world um, that I was curious about. And, um, and then, yeah, really kind of pulling together this just like amazing group of collaborators and, um, you know, Boo Boo being one of the, one of the strongest of them and, and then taking the project just like further and further and further um, into, you know, the, the chaos that, that, unfolds right um and for you boo boo this is quite a switching gears for you um in your career what was it about max that made you want to bring him to life uh it was a lot of things it was the project as a whole uh the idea that we would be making such a challenging uh piece and um you know on like rob I really, really wanted to work with Rob. You know, we were, we went back and forth so much just on the script and I could tell that it was going to be, he would be someone that I would really like bounce off well with and that we would really kind of push each other. Um, and I just thought it was, it was, I mean, the whole experience of like pushing yourself and trying to do something you've never done before. And then Max as a character, he had a lot uh, of internal struggles and uh, I love, I love it when you get a character and you can really dive in deep and just figure out the whys of uh, his life and just kind of why he's in the position he's in. And uh, I loved where the character was going to. So it was, it was a lot of things, honestly. Awesome. Um, do you have any memories from filming that, all, that you can take away for the rest of your career? Oh God! So, <laughs> yeah, like so every every day, <laughs> waking up and being like meditating in the morning, be like, oh, "Okay, come on, baby, you got this." <laughs> <laughs> Today is a big one. <laughs> I mean, just so many. Like, I gosh, I don't know. I don't even know where to start. Um, just, I mean, the first day, I could start there. I remember being so incredibly nervous. I was like, "What?" are you doing <laughs> like, like this is this gonna actually work <laughs> like you know because you get on set and you've been rehearsed we were rehearsing for about a month before and we're rehearsing we're saying all the lines uh but you're behind a computer because we're doing this during covid and then we got there and we had about a week or so of, of rehearsals uh on location and then uh, I was feeling like decent. I was feeling decent about it. I was like, okay, here we go. And then I remember the first day came 
and we're going to shoot and, you know, it hits you that you only have like two takes to do this. And because like Rob, I, I forgot about this, but our movie primarily takes place during golden hour. So you don't really, the, we're battling the light. And so, and the takes are so long, we only can do it so many times. And I just remember that feeling of uh, really having to hunker down and focus and uh, really just being like a wake up call. And uh, that's a memory that will definitely stick in my mind. <laughs> Learn good learning lesson. Have you yeah. ever seen your seen your because you wrote this as well, so seeing your words up on up on the screen. Could be quite cool, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I I I think I'm just super proud of what the team was able to accomplish. You know, it's such a leap of faith for everybody. You know, I mean, we really there was a huge chance that you know, COVID would strike, that we wouldn't be able to make our days, that we would run out of money. I mean, they're just, the list goes on and on and on, right? The, literally, that the sun would go down before we had finished shooting, like, just on and on and on. And that everybody was like, yeah, it's so crazy, it just might work. And, you know, leaned into it, focused, work, worked incredibly hard, brought, you know, so much creativity to it that it's really... It's really great to just kind of sit back and and look at, at what everybody has accomplished and knowing where we started, knowing that we were like, maybe, you know, maybe. like, yeah, like, um, and that that's really cool. I mean, um, and and then yeah, to answer your question about you know one of the most kind of memorable experiences is um, there's a there's a performance that that Boo Boo has in the film where he's um upstairs I don't want to spoil anything but he's upstairs and, and kind of breaks down you know it's the moment his kind of character cracks in half and um and I was just kind of juggling a bunch of other things and struggling to like be present as a director um up in the room and so I you know was kind of getting my head in the game and then Boo Boo felt like he was kind of struggling to get all the way there with the character and there was we just like it was just you know, Boo Boo, myself, and and Diego, our, our DP, and we just like doubled down. We just threw everything <laughs> into it. Um, and the performance is like, I think, I mean, to mention, you know, Heath Ledger and the Joker, like, I, it is like top, top notch. I, every time I see it, I'm just like, my baffled by it. And, um, and that was quite an experience. Um, uh, for for Diego, I think maybe less so, but <laughs> yeah. he 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 walked out afterwards and was like, said to his his um his his uh, best boy was like, oh I I need a I need a hug. He's like it was like a lion's den up there. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the craziest moments, yeah, that I've ever experienced on the set. Probably honestly, the craziest moment I've ever experienced on the set. I, I love the, you know, doubling down. Literally, it was like give it everything you've got, throw everything into the van, like just run head first. And that was, that one moment encapsulates what the movie was like. <laughs> awesome. Um, now filming during, during a pandemic, um, how different was that uh, as opposed to filming regularly? Like without that pressure? Ex extremely hard you also have to you know remember that we or, or or know that we um we filmed pre uh vaccine so you know this is this was sort of uncharted they had just started batman back up and you know this was like oh you know filming and studios are coming back and it got shut down like this the, our first day of shooting and so we read this in the news and we're all just like just keep, <laughs> just keep moving just keep moving you know? and this is like this is as our like first ad wakes up and he's not feeling very well oh, yeah, like, that's right. get him get him away from everybody get him tested like he, he just he had his nerves really high and so he he just you know wasn't feeling great that morning but it wasn't COVID. i mean it was just it added a lot onto it and i guess i wasn't really worried <laughs> Because I think like people do their best work when the stakes are high, if you find the right people that work in those conditions. You know, like I'm formerly an athlete. I mean, 
Ubu's, you, you know, a top-notch athlete. And that's what it is, right? It's like you, you just quiet everything, you get your head in the game and you focus and you do it. And, um, and so for us, it was like, let's calculate everything. Let's make sure we do it safe. Uh, we basically put everybody in one hotel and kind of quarantined away from the rest of the world. We went to our sets, we kept, you know, zone A and zone B um, and yeah. And, you know, but it, it did add extra pressure. Boo, I don't know if for you on top of acting on top of everything yeah. that also was. Um, I, I don't know. I guess I, I honestly wasn't even thinking about it that much. Um, <laughs> I was just like, oh, we have to get tested every morning. <laughs> but that, that was really, I mean, I, cause I was so, I don't know. My mind was, sorry this huge jet just flew over my apartment <laughs> that's crazy um no nah, yeah i i wasn't really uh thinking about that uh aspect of filming because i i think i was just so like i had so much to remember already and i was just i just needed to show up and do my thing and like <clears throat> that was just it was happening in the world but i, I did like rob said i did feel like we totally had this like little community and we're just like pluck everybody from your places. Okay. Boop, there you go. <laughs> and yeah. we were filming in such small towns. It's not like we were filming in like in New York city, you know, uh, or LA we were filming in Chillicothe, <laughs> Illinois, in this tiny, tiny, tiny little town, which is beautiful. And I'm so thankful that we were able to do that. But I also think because of COVID and because we had probably a smaller crew and because uh, for a lot of different reasons, but COVID reasons too. Um, it created this like great family unit that uh, w- was needed to make this movie happen. We all were so close because uh, all we were just all in one uh, hotel, like a yeah. tiny little hotel, not even like a big hotel, like this tiny little hotel in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. <laughs> so it was great. I, I, I think what we really made a sort of to do is is to make the sort of lean into the silver lining of of COVID, um, mm-hmm. you know, putting everybody in one hotel. Um, and also, I generally prefer smaller crews, you know, it just allows for like more engagement from everybody and, and mm-hmm. more of a rapport and you know, certainly when you do much more, you know, larger lighting setups, you, you need to expand, but um, uh, it, it allowed for more flexibility with that. And also when you're looking every direction, you can't really have a lot of people anyway. So, you know, this film, you know, this film actually lent quite well to working in COVID conditions, despite, you know, all of us traveling to the location to do it and, and, you know, the, the film, you know, takes place over, over a couple different locations. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Sounds like you can, you've um, ro- roasted a challenge on that one. Um, so uh, this being a horror film, uh, what's your preferred genre and do you have any favorite films? Oh, I mean, I have so many favorite movies. Um, I love Rust and Bone. Uh, I love my all-time favorite movie is a film called um, The Adventures of Baron Munchausen, the Terry Gilliam movie. Um, I love The Dreamers. Um, but yeah, I have so many movies. I love Blade. But um, I, I think like horror is a, I love horror films. Like I have a, this room behind me is filled with <laughs> horror memorabilia. And just, I, I'm a huge fan. I, like I love Jason uh, Jason Voorhees. He's just my favorite. Like <laughs> I love it. But on to to say that though, I was very nervous about doing a horror film. I was super nervous about it. I was nervous about it uh, just being like a genre made film. Uh, also nervous about having to act in a horror film. I personally think I always take my hat off to actors in horror films because I think it's the hardest. Um, anybody who's an actor can sit there and have a conversation and if it's if the camera's on the shoulder kind of shaky it will look natural just because it's the oh you get them walking and like shoot it from the back like it was seems natural but when you have to act scared to something that isn't like real um it's very hard i think and that's why i really like ours because there's so many layers to the film and uh i don't know being able to work through with rob and finding out what those layers were 
I made the scariness tangible, something real. But I love horror genre, so. Yeah, and um, for, for me, I, I guess I have favorite directors, um, you know, not necessarily like one genre in particular, um, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I generally really like films that you look at and you're like, how do they pull that off, right? Like, like Lawrence of Arabia or um, there's a, a film that, that Boo Boo and I both like called uh, Black Cat, White Cat. Oh, yes. um, or or even like you know um Tchaikovsky's films like uh um like Stalker um you know th things that are just you look at and you're like that that was extremely ballsy um you know that, that you were able to pull all this off and um and also I, I you know I really like like David Lean you know like Frank Capra um and films that that you know, are entertaining and that also have, you know, a, a message behind them that um, kind of gets you thinking. Awesome. Um, are there any uh, any genres that you haven't done yet you'd that you'd like to? Action. <laughs> I mean, yeah. at least so, so Boo Boo and I are working on a, an action script together. Um, awesome. So, I mean, Boo Boo's obviously done action as an actor, uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, this one writing writing together i don't think I, I haven't done it like properly in the sense of like how we're writing though <laughs> i've been in like action movies but i've never been the guy to like really mess up you know go in yeah so, never, had, so. never had a had a fight in a jet that was crashing <laughs> yeah you never you never fought somebody in a jet f free falling no uh, <laughs> not then, yet. You have, then, you, then you haven't done it properly <laughs> yeah, not yet. In a suit. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we we'll look forward to that when it comes out. Um, so, yeah. with, with the popularity of streaming services like Netflix, what do you think the future of cinema is? Oh, that's such a. I. It's so frustrating. I, like I think. I love that there's so many different platforms out there. I think it's amazing. It makes. Uh, being able to watch a movie so much more accessible and uh, it creates so many more platforms for like um, movie makers, you know, and I think that's a great thing, but I, I personally love, there's nothing like watching a movie on the big screen. Like I truly do think that's an experience that, uh, that I, I, mean, I, I love it. I, I really love it. And some films just beg to be seen on a big screen, not on your computer. And uh, unless you have an at-home like cinema, like, which will be great. <laughs> but I, I love going to the theater. I, I don't know what the future holds for them. Rob, I feel like has a way better answer than me. But personally, I hope they stay around because I really, really love them a lot. I mean, one day I would love to open a movie theater, like a small theater. That's one of my dreams. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the future is is that you know there's going to be a lot more series just because then they can keep subscribers. But mm. I don't think it I don't think it changes much more beyond that. You know, I mean, uh, obviously there's the Scorsese Marvel debate going on. You know, but I think that debate has always been there. Is these huge you know tentpole films, these you know kind of gimmick films versus things that speak to the human condition. And I think if you just kind of look at the history of art outside of film, that too has, has always been there, right? The, the things that last uh, are the things that sort of evoke something deeper within us and sort of speak to what it is to be alive and to be a human being and, um, uh, you know, to love, to face, you know, death, all these things. And so I, I think, yeah, the future is to, you know, continue to, um, explore, you know, in different ways, in different environments, and in, in, you know, different narrative paths. Um, and, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's very, it's very bright, you know, I mean, everybody turns to, turns to storytelling to interpret and, and, um, you know, pull them out of life or, or better understand their, their current situation. And so I think it'll just continue to do that. Absolutely. Um, and what are you hoping audiences will take away from those who walk away when they get a chance to see it on February the 11th? Oh, they're scared. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and they're scared and they warn their friends that they probably like you should probably not see that unless you you know unless you want to go through some stuff <laughs> yeah, and i also hope they want to rewatch it in the sense of that there's so many layers to our film i think that was one of the key things that rob and i really really wanted to like throw in was that um we weren't making just like your run-of-the-mill like haunted house horror film and i think uh yeah i i hope people take that away that it's not just your run-of-the-mill haunted house that there's a lot of layers and i hope they can see them and uh they want to dive into it again indeed awesome um now obviously you've, you've assembled a wonderful cast in this film um what were they all like to work with Oh, I, I thought they were great. I mean, everybody was so amazing. Um, Scarlett and Grant and Bryce, and, like, I, everybody was fantastic. My father, um, everybody really had the same, um, and the whole crew too, honestly, not just the cast, but everybody showed up every day uh, to make it happen. There, we, we, didn't, we didn't really have any like doubters on set. You know, like so many times you're working on a set and you're like, oh, when's lunch? Or like, oh, this is going to be a long day. You know, like literally that's like the attitude of a lot of people on set. And uh, I feel like everybody, the crew, the cast, everybody showed up like ready to actually make this movie and make it really great. The best that they can, like their best putting into the film. And uh, I feel like that's the only way like this movie was able to happen. So I, the cast was awesome. I loved it. I think each person played the part so well. And uh, also when you are doing these long takes and if someone's kind of like missing all the cues or someone is, you know, not really in it fully, then it's just, it throws the whole thing. So um, I really feel like we got extremely lucky and then Rob and like choosing everybody too, so. Yeah, I mean, just so much confidence in everyone, you know, to the point that it was like, it was like, there's just so much prep and everybody really just, you know, bringing their A game and, and showing that well before we were even on location that, you know, then the concerns were like, does the, it does like the black sludge, like have the right texture to it, you know? And like, when you start getting to like those levels, you're like, this is, yeah, this, this is a really good spot to be. And um, but yeah, I mean, Scarlett I've worked with before. I mean, she was phenomenal. Um, and, you know, I, so many people who have watched the film so far like the first thing they're like boo boo scarlet like just riveting you know and then grant and then bryce like this kid you know he's like the kid came on and immediately we're like oh it's gonna go sour here like you know but that's just like the the that's just the idea of what you know it is to work with kids but bryson is like completely the opposite i mean as a director like yeah you can bet on bright uh, on bryson and um uh yeah, I mean, it's just, just phenomenal, you know, group and, and really, you know, among everybody, you know, everybody got close as, as Boo Boo mentioned. And, you know, my goal as the director was also, despite us knowing everything so clearly, knowing the lines to mm -hmm. still sort of like drop uh, little bombs here and there, you know, like run an improv right before the scene and have mm -hmm. it go a completely different way um, to just kind of keep that like, hey, I might actually do that on a take to make sure that everybody's, everybody's, you know, ready for anything. Wonderful. Um, and Boo Boo, how's it, how, what was it like working with your dad on set? It was awesome. Yeah. It was really, really cool. Yeah, totally. Um, he played two different roles. He was a stunt coordinator and he played rock creep. Um, so he was wearing like several hats as were a lot of people because they were such a small <laughs> family unit. Uh, but he, yeah, I will say, like, I was definitely hesitant or nervous to, like, be in scenes where he's playing, like, a monster, and I'm supposed to be scared of him, because I know he's my dad, <laughs> you know, like, it's hard enough to be scared of, like, act like you're scared of a monster, but then it's like, oh, he's my dad, <laughs> mm. but we both, like, would get into different head spaces, and the nuances he was doing, the movements, everything he brought uh, to the character, like, you know, it's it's hard acting through, you know, a mask and 
Uh, you, when you're not saying anything, like let alone that, and now you put a mask on your face, like what are you supposed to do? You know, but um, every little thing he did was so uh, it was subtle, and it was it just made it work. I really, really loved how he uh, like stood as the character, and then um, him being a stunt coordinator is great too. I always love doing that. I've worked with him as a stunt coordinator several times, and he brings such a safe. Uh, feeling to the set you know when you have a gun on set when you have when you're running around and it, everything's slippery because there's sludge and stuff everywhere and and then you're like falling and throwing things and ripping stuff apart uh you want to know that um you can you have free reign to go as hard as you can because you know at the end of the day it has been checked and things are safe and so in both ways it was very comforting to have him um there every step of the way awesome awesome um where um what does the future hold for those who walk away well um yeah as, as uh uh you know you mentioned so the film is coming out february 11th um it'll be in in a couple cities uh theatrically for a week um that's detroit um let's see mitch probably has the full list uh, Detroit, Chicago, Los, Angeles, Los Angeles, Brooklyn, New York, Minneapolis. Perfect. Thank you. And um, and yeah, it'll be playing playing in those cities for for a, a week. Um, you know, really looking forward to the reception of the film and and you know to hear what audiences and critics think of it. And um, and then you know it's going to be at Berlin. Um, you know, to to international buyers in the next next week or two. And um, you know, for us, yeah, it's really just. You know, I mean, it's just such exquisite performances and um, really something we're proud of. And uh, so, you know, trying to get the word out to as many people as possible that it's it's on its way and um, we hope they check it out. Wonderful. Um, and where can we find you on, uh, online and, and obviously the film um, to keep up with everything you're doing? Uh, for me, I, it's uh, like online, I guess, Instagram would probably be the the place but i it's a spooby steward dot art and that that is i <laughs> yeah and um for myself it's just r rip burger also on instagram um or twitter or, or wherever and uh there's um vmi worldwide um who's handling the release of the film uh their website their handles there um there should be a website for the film very soon if there's not already and uh and that's where you'll be able to see you know exactly where to go um, and to, to watch it and um, and also to check out the theaters that it's playing in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been wonderful. Um, and I look forward to what, what you do next. And hopefully there's a follow up to the film. Yeah, well, thanks so much. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Well, thanks very much. Thanks, Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca.
Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.